Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Kwame Yasa'ala, Kohuloimla, Yahweh, Bahasim Yahweh Shai, Bahasim Rekahakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders, the great millstone who rule well, and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth, and just want to state the water to Allah Aki and Menachwaf, that is out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bahasim Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. This is Yachanan Nawaf. It's coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And I've um, got a couple of articles, you know, to just show that um, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, first off, and that the Lord, he is the one that kills and makes alive. He wounds and he heals. And he's in control of when those things happen. So you have the Christian church, they'll tell you that, you know, the Lord is lovely and he loves everybody, he loves everything. They don't give you the side. They don't tell you that the Lord, he deals on the right hand side and on the left hand side. And that he created spirits for vengeance. They're not telling our people that. They're just telling our people that, okay, you're saved. By grace, you can just be a damn demon. Don't worry about it. As soon as you die, the Lord, he's, you know, he's just going to just, just, just welcome you home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that, that type of uh, thing, you know. Even though we know that um, when a person passes away, you know, your spirit goes back to the Lord that gave it. And there's no such thing as a hell underground where this place underground is burning, you know, like the Christian church. They use that bullshit, too. But anyway, this young man that you see right here, um, he got the business of those spirits of vengeance, right? So it says three year old boy not expected to survive after getting viciously attacked by a pair of pit bulls. Viciously, right? It says a three-year-old boy who was viciously attacked by a pair of pit bull mixes in Minnesota last week is not expected to survive his injuries, according to his heartbroken family. The tragedy unfolded when the boy Kovo Allen and his mother, Natasha Palacios Vega, were visiting a home in Ju on July 19th in Brooklyn Park where the two dogs were up for sale, according to police. Suddenly, one of the dogs attacked Kovo. And the second dog joined in, biting the boy and Vega. Desperate bystanders grabbed any weapon within reach to fight back the animals. There were adults in the area that started to defend the three-year-old boy using hammers and pickaxes pick to get the dogs off the three-year-old in affidavit um, obtained by the Star Tribune, Tribune said. Here you go, another story too right here. You see in the, in the blue right here, this link, it says a 75-year-old grandfather killed by a swarm of bees while working on Texas Ranch. See that? Hey, that's all spirits of vengeance right there, man. First responders rushed to the home and took Cole to the hospital and with grave injuries. Cole Allen 3 suffered grave injuries. Okay, so they got a GoFundMe, of course. That's him right there. He appears to be a little Edomite, but, you know, he could be an Israelite. Never can tell. You know, because there are Israelites that look like this. It's not a color thing, you know. It's not, no one's black or white. Those are social constructs made up by the so-called white man. You, um, you're an Israelite if you come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you're an um, Edomite if you come from Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. And those are the biblical names for the so-called white race. Esau, Edom, and the biblical name for the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans is um, Israelites. They come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But there are people that look like this. They're Israelites. We look like everybody. So it's not a color thing. Got to always make that disclaimer. But, you know, you read into a lot of this stuff, some of this stuff, and you can kind of get the spirit of it, you know what I'm saying, and can kind of tell, you know, who they, they are in a sense, you know. It says, since the attack, Koval's parents, Vega and Father Charles Allen, have been preparing their son to be an organ donor. So that this right here is kind of making me think, you know, this, these are Edomites organ donors you know what i'm saying so-called black people they're not into stuff like that you know they you know they you know you, you might sign the back of a driver's license unknowingly <laughs> you know and say yeah if i get into an accident you know i like all my my organs donated to science or whatever the fuck okay um it says this will honor Koval's life and save more children more children's lives in the hopes that no other parent has to endure the pain they are experiencing right now the update says vegas i guess the mother meanwhile has undergone two surgeries 
and will require an, an additional surgery and a skin graft for her recovery, according to friends and family. The two dogs, okay, they were um, XL variety, okay, of American bullies, mixed breed of American bulldogs, a pit bull. They're banned in the UK, okay. It's looking like a family of Edomites, but, you know, never can tell. We'll, you know. Foss noted that the dog attacks are are a problem in the community. So, yeah, it's been, hey, it's been, a, yeah, it's been a lot of that going on, though. You know, you never used to really hear about um, dog attacks like how you're hearing about them now. It says we had more potential dangerous dogs this year than we did last year. Charges are still pending. Detectives at the um, detectives gather evidence to hand over to the prosecutors. Uh, it says on Tuesday a seven-year-old girl was attacked. So yeah, this is a a, a thing that's really uh, becoming pretty normal now, and, and it's all because hey, we're living in the last days and things are, are turning up. So let's get this um, Ecclesiasticus thirty-nine and verse twenty-eight. It says, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So the Lord created spirits to, to appease his wrath. Fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. The point right here, verse 30, teeth of wild beasts. Because you know, them pit bulls, man, them, them, them in number some damn wild beasts, man. You know, people try and tame them. You just, you, you never know if they, you know, they're going to lash, you know, um, lash out or whatever. It says, teeth the wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. So these spirits, they get a commandment from the Lord and they rejoice in doing what he said to do. And that's even um, attacking a young man like this, you know, a, a young boy like this. Now this is not your 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 um white Jesus Christianity being spoken of here because these people have you think that um Satan and Satan alone is out here operating and doing things like this when Satan is actually one of those spirits that that was created for vengeance to go forth and do the Lord's bidding. All right? So now let's get Deuteronomy 32 and 39. And it reads, see now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. See? So let's get one also in 1 Samuel to just further prove that that's the Lord. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's um, doing these things. 1 Samuel 2 and 6. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. See? So we know that it's the Lord. That's in control of these um, spirits. He sends them forth to do their um, do his bidding. Now, killer whale sink one hundred and twenty twenty eight thousand dollar yacht and terrifying two hour Mediterranean sea attack, like watching wolves hunt. See, see those killer whales. Those are teeth of wild beasts as well, right there. You just got a couple links in here. As a matter of fact, let's click on this link here. Let's see. As a grandfather, he's 75 years old. He got the business from them bees, man. I've had a um a wasp attack before. I don't know if that's gonna play. It's gonna go into it. Oh, here we go right here. Yeah, it says a 75-year-old Texas grandfather was killed by a swarm of bees while he was working on his ranch. Those are spirits of vengeance right there. Bryce Smith was on his bulldozer clearing trees on his property about 90, 90 miles north of Houston when he took down one of the beehives. Smith suffered more than 60 stings on his face and neck. An employee working with Smith who witnessed the attack rushed him inside and called 911. He died from his injuries by the time responders arrived. The um, community lost a very, very good individual yesterday, a, good, a very good man. See, everybody says that. But what does the scripture say? Even the Lord said no one is good but Yahweh. He was a wonderful husband, great dad, great grandfather to his kids. He was a very respected Grimes County Justice of the Peace judge. Okay, anyway. But his ass is out of here, right? 75 years old, man. 
So the Lord, he, he placed spirits of vengeance on those bees. So the Lord can use weather. He can use, you know, the elements. He can use whatever he wants to use, man, to take a person out of here. Right? Because more than likely, you know, and he's 75 years old, man. He, he might be more than likely on stolen land. Well, all these Edomites are on stolen land. It don't even say whether he's an Edomite or not, but I'm willing to bet you he's a so-called white man. <laughs> You know, probably sitting on some stolen uh, uh, plot that his grandfather's, uh, great grandfather's, uh, 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 you know, uh, messed over the, the so-called Native American Indians for. You know, so let's go back. We don't have no remorse for none of this, man. These people, man. Hey, I say let them, let them. The Lord is judging. Let the Lord do his thing. Let's get this one up. Let's kill a whale. Kill a whale. Sink 128 thousand dollar yacht and terrifying two hour mediterranean sea attack like watching wolves hunt see here you go esau it's always esau you know esau you see that's how you be knowing you you can you can tell the spirit of esau because the scripture says that he's a cunning hunter he's pretty much he and he has the fatness of the land you know and he lives by the sword that's how we know who esau is man robert powell 59 and his crew were just 22 hours into their 10-day trip to um okay portugal to greece when the pod set his sights on a hundred thousand dollar selling boat to me they were not playing at all they knew exactly what they were doing they knew the weak points of the boat <laughs> and they knew how to sink it Powell, who was meant to be celebrating his birthday ab ab aboard the boat see this is esau damn killer whales man the five orcas it was five of them circled the 39 foot selling boat and took turns smashing it to, p to bits around 8 p.m. In a coordinated assault power compared to the, the carnage, the carnage of wolves. And, and see these, these, um, everything is sick of you damn Edomites, man. Look at this dude, man. Look at this motherfucker. It says the IT company owner said he felt the first hit on the bottom of the boat. Whilst I, whilst I was looking around the boat to see if I could see anything, I was doing about five to six knocks and got hit again. The pod of, of five first focused on the rudder, rendering the sailboat unable to steer after about 15 hits. <laughs> That's when the orcas separated and each concentrated on their own section of the boat's exterior, including the keel of and stern. They were circling. It was like watching wolves hunt. <laughs> they were taking <laughs> taking turns to come in. Sometimes two would come in at, at the same time and hit it. So obviously pretty terrifying. It took in half an hour until the ho the hole finally buckled beneath the whale's pressure and split, causing water to gush into the main living area of the... <laughs> Though they were just two miles off the coast of Spain, the crew radioed for help as soon as the attack began. It took two hours before help arrived. A Spanish salvage vessel fortunately helped them abandon the stripping ship minutes before it sunk 130 feet below. Damn, hey, 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 these animal, everything is tired of you damn Edomites, man. The animals are tired of you. I'm looking at some shit in the backdrop right now with Esau out here fucking with the uh, uh, platypus, man. This motherfucker got the damn platypus in, in, in a fucking doctor's office just with a damn breathing tube on him, you know, testing him and putting shit in him, man. These fucking people, bro, gotta go, man. <laughs> Straight up, man. I ain't even expect to go into these um, articles, man. But, hey, matter of fact, it was another article I seen. This guy, and this is happening quite a bit right here, too. So, like, yeah, let me go back in here. Had another story. Let me go into my history real quick with this guy. Uh, let's see. Check this out. That's why, we, you know, the scripture says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It says elderly man's foot, elderly man's severed foot lands on parked car after he jumps to his deletion from luxury New York City building. What's going on with these all these these so-called white men, man? That's jumping to their damn death, man. That's that spirit of vengeance, man, that's on, 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 on them, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and actually, Esau, see... These older so-called white men, they're starting to see it's no, no coming back from the, the days of old, the days when they were prospering, the days when they were doing good.
they miss those days, bro. And they can see that that shit is long gone and they understand clearly that it's never going to be that way again for them. They, they get it, man. It says an elderly man jumped to his um, deletion from a luxury upper west side building Saturday morning. Okay, so you, you living it up, man. What the fuck is you jumping for? And his foot was severed in the fall, landing on a car out front, cops said. The 84-year-old, see, he's around Trump in them age. The 84-year-old, who was not publicly identified, left a suicide note behind before plummeting to the third floor balcony on the anagram Columbus Circle at 1 West 60th Street around 7.30 a.m. So he just, like, probably had coffee. Motherfucker probably some toast. You know what I'm saying? The damn, um, um, uh, what's that, uh, Fandango guy jumped from a damn 20-story building, um, last week. The guy that owned the ticket service, um, Fandango, his ass jumped. I think he was like 50 or so. It says it wasn't immediately clear how his foot was severed in the fall or what floor he jumped from, cops said. A resident who lived in the building but declined to give his name said the man jumped from the penthouse which is vacant. He was a nice man, the resident said. He was only here for a month or two months. The apartment he was living in, a two-bedroom, is probably like 15 grand a month. See, this is how Esau living, man. 15 grand a fucking month, bro. Jake out here just trying to fucking, you know, put together five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred, a thousand, you know, twelve hundred, you know, shit like that, two grand. This motherfucker living in a spot, man, that's fifteen thousand dollars a month. Esau, man. That's how we know that this is Esau, man. He was given the fatness of the earth. And by the sword, he's been living, man. Been living luxur luxuriously. It says, it's a shame, he said. His family could have put him in a home. The three-bedroom apartment at the posh building rents for $22,000 a month. God damn. And a studio goes for $7,000. Oh, golly, man. Ooh, to the woo-woo-wee. Esau out here living it up. It says in a, in the second such death in less than a year, in a well healed neighborhood. Yep. In August, a New Jersey team took a taxi from his ex girl's home to the uh, ritzy Mandarin Oriental Hotel across the street from the Anagrin and FaceTimed her being plunging and FaceTime with her being before plunging to his death. See, so this is a, this has been going on as of late, man. People are are um you know in a pitiful state. The scripture talks about um when the when the righteous beareth rule, the people rejoice. Let me see if I can get that. Esau got everybody in a pickle, man. Even his own people. And everybody running out here, you know, rushing it to go vote for one of these clowns. No coming back for America, man. Uh, there's some Proverbs. Um, yeah, Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. That's what's going on, man. The people are in mourning. People are, are miserable. As a matter of fact, you know what? That's a um, one of those curses that's starting to backfire. On Esau as well, man. Um, let's get Baruch. Chapter 4. I think it's, uh, what is it? 32? Yeah, Bar Baruch 4 and 32. It says, Miserable are the cities which thy, thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy sons. So all these places that you see amongst Esau, Edom, the so-called white race, and that's globally. They, these places are um, being ran into the ground. They're not prospering, man. They're miserable. And it's mainly because they've all taken on the children of Israel. They've taken the, the you know, the um, the apple of the Lord's eye. They've taken his, his, his fine jewelry, man, which is his people, Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And they put them to vigor, um, you know, vigorous slavery. And, and, and have had them for the past 500 years. And so now these people, these they're starting to feel the um, the curses being reversed or the curses um, landing on them, man. According to them, I think that's Deuteronomy chapter 30. Okay, it says, for 
as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. See? Because they were happy as hell when we fell, when they got us in slavery, when they done what they done to us. You know? So now they're starting to feel the grunt of that. And you got this newer generation. They don't even know what's going on. They have no idea. But the elite of these people know exactly what's happening. It says, for I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting long to endure and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. And, 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 and them thermonuclear um, missiles is coming this way to these Americas, man. And you so-called white people, man, y'all going directly head strong into slavery, man, as soon as the Lord comes. You're not going to be in rulership. You know, no more. That, that, that's a wrap. We've seen what your, what your rule is, is like. The whole world is, is, is in damn mourning, man, because of you people, man. Right? And the scriptures talks about how these people are gonna complain of, of 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 you you know you unrighteous fathers roughly paraphrasing man. See, so hey, get ready for some things to start happening um, um to you people man, because you've done a lot of dirt and 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 to think that okay if this guy can afford twenty five thousand dollars a month you know what I'm saying you think that he'd be fucking happy, unless he's running he was just on 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 which I doubt. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of these people, man, they be living lavishly throughout their lives and, and pass those those estates right on to their children. And they live lovely. And then another generation will come through. They live lovely. It's just ongoing wealth. Ongoing fucking wealth, man. But in the meanwhile, they have you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans stuffed up in these goddamn neighborhoods, these ghettos, feeding you some fucking, um, you know, pushing damn um, hot Cheetos on you, man. Fagos and shit, pushing Pepsis and Coca Colas on you, shit that these people would never um 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 drink or eat. But you in the hood, you 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 trying to get a uh you know, what a bucket of greasy ass church's chicken or something or some damn um uh, uh KFC or some Popeyes. We got you rolling through a damn drive through for for a burger that's not even a burger, man. But he's living uh uh, uh twenty five thousand dollars a month, man. Seven thousand dollars for a goddamn studio apartment. Can you imagine that? Come on, bro. Living it up, but you so miserable to the point where you jumping off buildings. And who does that? You know, Edomites are the only people that I know that 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 are you know that do shit like this, like jumping off a damn building. Uh, it's so many ways you can go. I I can't really see jump the the building jumping to be the first on the list for me. If I was, you know, but I mean, hey, it's all about the spirit and power. How about Shimei was side too, though, man? That place the spirit on these people to do that. So, you know, I mean, the point has been made, but let me grab two more. Let's get this Isaiah 45. Come on, buddy. I ain't moving kind of slow here. I probably should have just um, stayed in the Bible I was in. In fact, let's just go back to this one. Isaiah 45 and 7. And it reads, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. See? So the Lord, he created good and evil man but you will have these christians tell you that the lord is only good the lord will not do evil but let's get this right here amos the lord created um life and death man he created everything in tools amos three and six shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid shall there be evil in a city and the lord have not done it see that it's nobody. It's nothing going down without the um, without the Lord sanctioning it. Scriptures even talks about how um, a sparrow would not fall to the ground, you know, without His sanctioning, man. So when people are doing what they're doing, it's all because you. How about Shimei was shy? Is in control of what they're doing, man. It's, you're not out here just got free will and doing what you want to do. It's just not the case, man. So. I just wanted to just touch on this, seeing them a couple of articles, and you know, 
it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, man. You have to know that it's the Lord that do these things. This is not Satan just out here just, you know, doing what he wants to do. That's a um that's white Jesus Christianity, which is a damn idol. You know, white Jesus is an idol. That's what they teach you in the Christian church is that Satan is just out here, you know, he he's equal with the Lord. He can do what he wants to do when he wants to do it, and that's not the case. These are uh, the Lord created spirits of vengeance, man. And Satan just so happens to be one of those sons of God. That's his that's his that's his lot. That's what he's he's designed to do. He can't just do what he wants to do. And you can pretty much see that um, in the book of Job. When you read through the book of Job, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, if Satan can only do to Job what the Lord told him he could do to him. He couldn't do no more or no less, so to speak. He wasn't able to just say, oh, forget what the Lord going to say. Forget what the Lord said. I'm just going to kill this nigga. No, he couldn't do that. Satan is not running around out here doing what he wants to do. So hey, get that, that notion out of your head. That's definitely white Jesus Christianity, man. And that's some idol worship. That's adding to and taking away from the Holy Scriptures, man. The Lord is in control of all things. So with that, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Come on,